Hello guys, I will show you how I do AI research step by step on what I hope to be one of the best large language models in the world in some time. This is how they do research at OpenAI, XAI, Anthropic, Google, etc. We would eventually like to have the best large language model as open source better than OpenAI, XAI, etc. So maybe we can start working on that. I already have my large language model uh, published your own LLM right here, but let's now uh, read this language language model paper and uh, what we can learn from that. The first thing I got from paper is they have grouped query attention, which I don't have. I just checked. I just have this uh, scale dot product without grouped query attention. And so is it better than the current one? It will be, I'm pretty sure. And what research should I do to implement this? We'll see because I cannot just copy uh, from them because my architecture is different. So I would like to believe that my ar architecture is the latest best one. But let's see how we can improve it before we start some kind of training. They use this group query attention using four groups. There are ablations on 3 billion model, which we are going to build 3 billion parameters. It's small enough and big enough. Um, on 100 billion tokens, showed that group query attention matches the performance of multi-head attention while significantly reducing the KV cache size during inference. I guess during, during training as well or not. Then they implemented this paper, rope to nope and back again. A new hybrid attention strategy, which I'm pretty sure I don't have this. Uh, my LLM was partially coded by Claude and I'm pretty sure there is no this. This is selectively removing rotary position embeddings from every fourth layer. This approach improves long context performance without affecting short context capabilities as confirmed by our ablations. So I added here, uh, do ablations in the paper and small LM. How do I make sure I fit ablations to my LLM? I like GPT-5 because I think OpenAI almost caught up with everybody else in coding. Then with data, now I have just documents and I concatenate all document text and then I train it to predict but uh, sometimes we get a bit of this document bit of this document and then it needs to predict like this document based on this document which is unrelated so that's a like a bug in my training so i need to fix that i need to apply masks uh, across documents so only sees one document at a time but when i fix that i want to actually do experiment and measure if it actually improves the performance and explain the results by the way, if you have any suggestions on these research things, it's not so polished, but you can just tell me below how I ask questions or what questions I should ask. So that's just the question for this. So does enforcing cross document masking affect convergence speed or sample efficiency? And then I have unrelated. After I train the model, does model focus attention on correct answer or random token? So when I ask question, does it focus attention on the actual answer in the context or is attention wasted on other tokens? Training stability. Following all mod 2, we removed weight decay from embedding layers to improve training stability. I want to re-implement this in my LLM, turn it into a research question. I'll just paste this here, you can check if you want. I'll think about it more later when I do other experiments. They tested all of these things and it all either improved the performance or maintained it while offering other benefits, I guess speed, for example. Is any combination of these changes have negative effect, even if all have positive effect individually? I don't know. And also I do feel like this is a bit overwhelming question. It's maybe even too difficult. What do I even do here? Also, DeepSeek has multi-head latent attention. I already implemented it. I know how to do it. Maybe we should do some experiments with that. I think other models like Kimi, maybe Minimax have this as well. Maybe. I'm not sure. By the way, how much time and cost to do this one experiment? 100 billion tokens, 3 billion parameters. So A times H200, 1.5 to 3 days, 150 to 300 dollars, which is not too much actually. This is GPT-5 est estimation. Training configuration. They use global batch size of 2.36 million tokens. That's a lot. With 4096 sequence length. They're not using muon optimizer. We can make this LLM a lot better. Maybe two times better. Just with muon optimizer. That I already have in my uh, code. 
they have a bunch of these different settings. I'm not sure what to do with them. Should I do some ablations or... I don't think I should copy paste because different LLM architecture might require different uh, hyperparameters. But Muon is very robust, more robust than Atlan W on learning rate, for example. That's what my experiments showed. But I don't know how that will scale to this uh, big experiment. Oh, I think we need to do a bunch of smaller experiments, learn a bunch of these hyperparameters and how they scale. What scales, what doesn't scale, and how do I even like research that? I guess we just try a bunch of different things and then figure something out. I need to do a bunch of small experiments, figure out what scales, what doesn't. They trained this model on 384 H100 GPUs for 24 days. I mean, other models are trained on 100,000 of these, so 380, not too much. Their distributed training is a bit interesting. We can do something like this. So one model is split across two GPUs with tensor parallelism. One node has eight GPUs, so in total four models on one node. And then data is split throughout all of the nodes. They store checkpoints every 2k steps. I think it's very fre frequent. I'm not sure how long one step takes. And evaluations run asynchronously independent of training. So they store a checkpoint into S3 bucket, run evals and print data into weights and biases. So they also has some training recipe for data. They trained in on 11.2 trillion tokens in total, which is a lot. They mixed uh, web, text, math and code with evolving proportions. They conducted extensive ablations on 3B models trained on 50B and 100B tokens to determine the data mixture and ratios. We can learn how they did this and we can replicate this and do something similar. We will learn so much about research doing this. We can probably already reduce training by 60 or more percent with Muon Optimizer and FP8 and maybe even FP4 uh, training. In the beginning there is most web text and in second and third phase they add more and more math and code and it's high quality towards the end. And look at the learning rate schedule. First a fast warm up, then a long stable phase, same learning rate and then decay. This is different from somebody who has like fast warm up and then immediately starts a slow decay. So should we uh, just take this? Should we do ablations? I'm not sure. There is a detailed description of the data. They also have some uh, reasoning mid training, which is aiming to be general reasoning ability, not just specific for math or code. They also have long context extension to 32K uh, context window and then to 64K. I like this. We have a general plan. In the next videos, I'm gonna think uh, further, refine, ask better questions and do more of the research. So see you next time. Maybe I will have playlist in the video description for this series if it becomes series.